Hello everyone, I'm Soranza Walsh and this is Art from the Heart at St. Augustine's Church. And while we are easing the lockdown, we're still doing the sessions remotely. And today we're still on Cubism and the subject would be a dove and a penguin. And this is the artwork we did in class and we will be doing this in this session right now. Okay, so let's start. For this one, we have to do a sketch and then distort the sketch, just as what we did uh, in our previous session. So it's going to be something like this, wherein we do the sketch on um, grid, uh, on a distorted grid, and we straighten that grid and create the distorted images. Now, to do this, we first have to get a A4 sheet of paper. There we go divide it into two and then draw our grid lines. So I'm going to draw the grid lines uh, using uh, acrylic pen. Yeah, and I'm going to follow the same shape that we have here because uh, on my drawing I already have it uh, in that shape. But you can uh, do any shape you want. So for this one, I'm just following the shape of the distorted grid line. Okay, not exactly, but uh, close enough. And then we have these grid lines here. fantastic so now it's time to draw okay in order to draw this we have to imagine that we have the same grid lines on the uh, sketch original sketch of the penguin and of the dove as well however in this case I didn't just imagine it I actually drew it on the sketch and I've also shaded the area that we are not going to draw on the grid lines, uh, on the sheet. Okay, so for this one, this is the only area I need to draw. So it's going to be here, like so. And yes, I do have the shading here. However, you don't have to do this right now. You can do this later on. And then I'm going to leave this blank because... Um, here I've already marked that I will not be drawing that area. And then the next area I will be drawing would be this one. And this one would be including the head of my penguin. Oops. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, this is not, we're not doing realism. So we will be doing a lot of distortion. Okay, I'm making the lines thicker so you can uh, see it from your end. You actually don't have to make it thicker. This is just for you to see. Okay, fantastic. Now I have to draw the beak. The beak. So to draw the beak, it's like a V here on this side and then on this side another V however the end of the beak must be curved uh, again it's not exactly the same this actually seems to be a bigger area than this well it is and you will see more of that when we draw the dove because this is only corresponding to a certain portion of the grid lines because it's of a different direction okay so now I draw the beak and then I'm going to draw the eyes. There we go, eyes. Okay, so I draw three circles for the eyes and the middle one, not the innermost, but the one in between the innermost would be uh, painted with black. So now I have this bit and here, as you can see, it actually has its uh, wing or arm or whatever you may call it. And it goes to this direction. 
okay so we will only draw it up to here because this one would not be included and then now the feet okay the feet looks funny but that's okay we will be trying to make it look more realistic by putting on yeah those uh, nails yeah okay so now we've actually done our penguin uh, without the details so I'm just going to put some of the detail in here just shading but you don't have to do it now again you can do this part later on uh, when we start before we start painting so when we draw the sketch on um, on the watercolor paper that's uh, the best time to do the shading I'm just doing it now to show you uh, the areas which would be shaded but you don't have to do it now okay so I've now finished doing the penguin and as I've told you, we're now going to do uh, the dove. So to draw the dove, we, we will apply the same process. So this is the first one we did. We drew this bit, we ignored this bit, we drew this bit, and we ignored this bit. Now we're going to apply the opposite for the dove, wherein we will be ignoring the first part, because we already have something in it. We will be drawing the second part, ignore the third part, and we're going to draw the fourth part which has the tail so the tail might not fit in the area because it's a bit long since the orientation is different however we will see what actually fits okay so for this one I'm gonna start here and I'm going to start with a curve and then another curve and then here, another curve. So this is the dove's body and head. And now I am going to draw the beak. So similar to the penguin, the beak is just like a V. And then we have the eyes. Smaller eyes, just two circles. And then we have one more thing here on this um, uh, part, which is this curve representing the wing. So this uh, area is now finished. We now move on to the left area, which is the tail. Now for the tail, assuming this stuff continues, I start here. Okay. And then here, assuming it continues again, okay, I continue here, I do that, like that. Okay, this is a representative of feathers, again, representative of feathers, and so are these, but they're representative of different kinds of feathers. Okay, so that's my, my dove, including the tail. So now we can set this one aside. And now we can continue with this one. Now we will be distorting the image, but we have a very organized way <laughs> of distorting the image. And that is by creating a grid line, okay, which are straight. And what we're going to do is to fit the contents of this areas into the rectangular shape. So to create the grid lines, we will draw three straight lines in each uh, direction. Okay, maybe not so straight, but we will try to make it straight because the goal is to have about 16 um rectangles by the way it's not there's no limitation on the number of squares you're having here uh, i'm just using 16 because of the size of my art piece but you could use uh, just nine uh, or maybe 12 or you can use uh, 32 or even more um squares uh 
you can have more lines in your grid. So it depends on the size of the artwork and the kind of artwork and of course your personal uh, choice. So now I will have to draw this again, but I have to adjust it to this grid line. So now we start with the first uh, area here. And as we can see, there's nothing here. So there will be nothing here. Second one, nothing there, nothing here. Third one, okay. Third one, we have this, but what would happen is that this area to convert it to that one will be compressed. Okay, so from here, it's going to move closer to each other. So this will become thinner and then a little bit longer so that it can be the same shape as this. So we are going to draw that. So, so if we convert it to this one, this is actually what we will have. So we have distorted that into this image. And then the last uh, area, it also has nothing, so it will just be a space. And then we move here to the top, okay? We have this area, which has nothing in it, okay? And then the second area, which only has this in it, so I will just draw that, uh, okay? I will just draw that in that area. So this is all I have for this area. Now I move down to the next area. So this is um, more meaty because there's a lot of stuff going on in this particular area. And now we have to compress that. So just like what we did here, this is going to be compressed like so. And also on this side. So it's actually going to shrink a lot. So and we have to fit all of that here. Okay, so let me just uh, draw temporary grid lines here. You don't have to do this, this is not a requirement, but uh, you can if you feel comfortable doing that. You can just draw straight ahead. Okay, so I'm just doing that. Okay, so based on that the drawing. Okay, the eyes would also be more elongated in that direction. No, it would be elongated in the other direction. My apologies. So I need to, I need to remove this eyes and change it so it will be elongated into this direction like so and then we have to draw the wing or the curve representative of the wing yes so now we have distorted the image into this one and then we continue to the last area here so the last area here, okay. It would be like so. And we're done with this row. So we have two rows finished. And then we continue on to the next one. So the next one, we will start here. This is the first, first area. Again, just like uh, the other one previously, from this shape, we have to compress it like so, and then also compress it like so. So we will do that. I'm just going to put temporary grid lines. And then we will start.
Okay, start the tab. And then here. Like so. And then we have We have the beak here, and then the eyes, this is now the shape of our, um, the design on the penguin's neck and then we end there so i'm just going to shade this now before i move on to the next bit so we have distorted our penguin and fitted it into these grid lines from this now we move to the next area so for the next area okay I have that line and then we will just draw this okay so here because of that this has been made sorry wider okay and then this one would be up to here So this is two areas now, and then we move on to the third area where we only have this curved line. So it's just a matter of um, positioning the line. So I have, I have a beginning here. So here, we just continue it. And now we're finished with this area. And then we move on to this one. So for this one, I have to get the middle so I can estimate the position so this is about a quarter and just move this I find this bit of uh, distorting the image very interesting okay so now I have that curve now I have to begin uh, working on the feet. Okay, so I now have the feet. So I finished this row. Now I'm on to the last row. And uh, the first one would have nothing on it, so I'll leave that blank. The second one would have nothing on it as well, so I would leave that blank. Third one uh, would have some items on it. Okay. Okay, there we go. So I just need to get a rough estimate of... Uh, where I do the feathers. Again, these are just um, to help me estimate where I position the object. You don't even have to do it, but if you feel comfortable, uh, more comfortable making a smaller grid lines, then feel, do feel free to do so. And again, the drawing does not have to be perfect, we are actually distorting the image. So that's what I have so far on this side. Now we will continue that on this side of the grid. So here, let me just 
put my temporary grid lines there. And let me apply that here. So this one passes through that like so. Placing this. And then the next one, okay, the next one goes there. And then this one just goes like that. And then after that, here there's a curve. And there's another curve. These are all feathers, by the way. And then here, like so. And then now we start with the feathers like that. And then this is our sketch. This is the sketch that we will be drawing on our watercolor paper. So for this one, I will be drawing a temporary grid line in pencil. You might not be able to see it on your screen and you don't have to uh, draw this uh, grid lines as well. Because again, this is a, just my personal preference. If you can copy this without this grid lines, that would be amazing. If you prefer to put the same grid lines and transfer it using the same, that would be great as well. Okay, so that's my first uh, image. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We are doing um, distorted image. And there we go. Fantastic. So we've done two rows now. It's really very quick. It's quick and easy. And uh, yeah, it's very simple at this point because what we're doing is just copying. It's a, for me, the most challenging part is actually doing the distortion. But I think that's also the most creative part because it is at that point that we create a new, um, a completely different image in my opinion but it still has to be representative of the actual image so there's the challenge it's different but it has to be similar to the original okay and then here And here we also do the shading because now this is now important because now now we have to mark it because we will be painting it very soon so I'm now connecting it to this part and here as you can see I forgot to put the shading so I'm going to put the shading on now Okay, so that bit is done. Now we continue.
And then you just connect this here. Well done to us. And now we just have to do the feet. And the feet is really just easy. Like so. And then we're finished with this row. So we now go to the next row. And the next row is the one where we have our tail. Okay, this is where we have the tail of the dog. And then here, okay, we have this. Like so. And then we also have one here, which overlaps to this bit, this quadrant. And then Okay, we have to erase the unnecessary lines so we don't get confused. Oh dear, I've done it again. And then here, curved line. Let me just turn it a little bit so that um, it's easier for me to control the movement of my hand. Okay, so I've done that. And then I'm copying that, this curve here. And then one, excuse me, two, and then three. So that's the tail of my dove, that's my dove, that's my penguin. And now what we have to do is to repeat the pattern. What do I mean by that? It's the same as our uh, first few sessions where we have to repeat the pattern. So in this case, I am going to use the pattern repetition to close the shapes. Here we even have a straight area, so that would make it easier. Uh, for this one, okay, I will use this first. So I will draw a curve like so, which is this, and then to make it look even closer to that. So that's my first pattern repetition. And then I will do this one. Okay, so that's that bit. And then I'm going to repeat the pattern repetition here. So that's the same shape. Okay. Well, close enough. Oh, by the way, I have to remove the grid lines. Like so. Okay. That's better. So I've done the pattern repetitions. And here, okay, where were we? I'm going to repeat this pattern from here. So that's this one. So I've done that. I'm just going to extend it there. I'm going to extend it here. And then here, I will do this curve. So again, I've repeated that pattern. So I've done that area. Now I will move on to this area where I can close the line. So uh, for this one, I want I want the curve going that way. So I'm just going to copy this one. Yes, that would be perfect. So I'm just going to extend this a little bit like so and then we have that okay now from here i'm just going to uh, draw the curve again like so and then this one 
So now I've closed that. And here, I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm going to repeat the pattern. Slightly tilted in direction. And then I'm going to put this over here. So I like that shape. I like that shape, like so. And then I will repeat that pattern here. Like that. And then here, um, let me see which shapes we have. I'm going to use this one here, like so. And I'm going to repeat that here. And then here, oh, I do love this. I'm going to let this run through this, like that, and then go up. So I'm repeating that pattern over here. So I've done that now, okay? And then here, I'm just going to extend it. And here, what pattern do we want to repeat? Still just a simple curve, okay. So we'll do that. And then here, again, it's similar. I'm just going to repeat that pattern, part of that. And now I'm moving towards this side. Okay. Okay, so here, I wanna repeat this one here. Okay, slightly over. And then here, I will repeat this pattern this bit and then here I will repeat this one up to there yes just up to the peak that would make it more exciting and then here Okay, let me start here in part of the beak. I'm just repeating this one, but just a part of it. And lastly, here, what can we repeat in this area? Perhaps this one. We just turn that a bit and we repeat, we, we, we have repeated it. So now we can start painting. It's slightly different uh, to this one. That is because we repeat the different patterns, but it's going to be relatively the same. So to paint it, I would paint certain areas with one color. Here I distributed the color, but here I will just paint it um, maybe uh, color transitioning from the middle going out. So what I need to do in order to achieve that would be to paint it first with water. Again, we will be doing shading uh, later on, but what I am applying now would just be the base. So um, for the color, violet would be my uh, first one. Again, it's from the middle going out. Okay, so here it's still going to be violet, this area, this area, now this area. And then uh, outside violet, what color do we want? We want um, green. So I'm going to paint the rest of the background with green. So 
So essentially what we're doing now is a flat wash, painting the rest of the area with green. First, we did the flat wash of violet uh, for the inner portion. Okay, so just that. You can use more colors. Here we used our bases violet, green, and orange. And we did shadings um, using red, uh, blue, and dark green. Okay, so now we start shading it. And for the shading, I'm going to use blue for the green area. And I will use, um, no, I will use burnt umber for the green area for a change. And I will use uh, burnt sienna for the, burp, for the violet area. Yeah, that would be something different. Okay. So I will start um, with the violet area. Okay. So I would need to turn this around now so that I can start uh, in the violet area like so. And it's easier again it would have to be uh, just going through one direction so one side uh, let's say this would be uh, darker than the other side okay I'm probably going to use another color for the dove but uh, for this area this should be okay And then for the dog, maybe blue. Just to show that it is different. Then the same thing again in this area. There we go. And then again, this area. And then this area. Just like so. Again, if there's too much paint or water, just lift it. There we go. Fantastic. We're doing very well. Okay, now 
interestingly, I would like this um, dove to be more of blue than burnt sienna. So I will use blue for this one. So I can still see the dove. So now we're transitioning because this is not the green area, but I'm still using blue for shading. Uh, it's because I still want it to be part of the dove. So I will continue doing that. Until I feel like, hey, uh, the dove is, uh, I've completed painting the dove. There we go. Now, in this area, we need to lift some of the color, some of the paint. Same here. And here. So now we've shown uh, that our dove is there. So this time, we will paint the green area. We will do it with dark green color, dark green paint. Okay, let me just move some paint here and let me get some black paint so I can get the dark green paint that we would like. Okay, fantastic. I have it right here. So we will start here. Okay, and then we continue here. Like so. And then more dark green. And then just let feather through. Again, if we have too much, what do we do? We lift the paint. And if it's too much for a brush to lift, we use a kitchen towel, but we don't uh, rub it we just dab the paper. Okay, so we've done that bit. We're going to do this area now. And then we'll do this one up here. And then we will continue doing that until we finish the whole art piece. 
This is slightly different from the one we did in class, but the concept is still the same. So we shade it from one side to another, we distort the image, uh, and we also repeat patterns. So what we're trying to do is to show different planes in one plane. Okay. Well, we're almost finished. We're doing this really quickly. Again, it's about the shading. There we go. The transition of colors. And we have two more to go and we just have to do the penguin space. And if we have time, we can outline it. Otherwise, if we want to keep it the, the, like this as our final out, uh, output, we can do so as well. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I have to do the foot of the penguin in Burnt Siena. Because our penguin is in Burnt Siena. Fantastic. Oh, and also the beak. Has to be in Branchina. There we go. And now we are only have to do the black bits. I'm gonna change my brush and start doing the black areas. And we will start with the eyes. There we go. And then here as well, we have to do the eyes. And then this whole area. Oh, 
Okay, let's turn it around a little bit. Okay, fantastic. Okay, we're almost finished. A few more details in black. And we are good to go. And by those details, I mean this area below the beak. Remember the V earlier? And that heart shaped thing below that. And then here, the side. Aha, uh -huh. in this area here, remember that part. The nails, penguins, uh, feet, what else, this part, and so far, let's turn it, okay. so far this is what we have created, and as I've mentioned previously, we can actually leave it like this, we can see the dog and the penguin, or we can do the outline uh, of the different areas. So I hope you enjoyed this session on QPSM and see you again next time. Bye-bye.